Hi. You're a fool. Now, when I say you're a fool, I don't mean that you're a fool for love or that you and your money will soon be parted or that you sit on a hill and watch the sun going down and the eyes in your head see the world spinning round or anything so benign or playful as that. I mean, you're a moron. Your brain, it doesn't work. Your notion of rationality, of reason, of logic, of reality itself is so utterly skewed, is so irreparably broken, that if there were enough room in the world's insane asylums, I would have every single one of you committed. And before you go getting all bent out of shape, let me just add that I'd be right there with you in that padded cell, in that cuckoo's nest, wolfing down massive doses of chlorpromazine for breakfast, getting juiced every afternoon with 500 volts, and lining up by your side for my much needed lobotomy. Because I'm a fool too, just like you. And I'm mad as a hatter. I'm out of my freaking mind. What is it about all of us that makes us so demented, so deranged, so doffed? What is it that makes us so senseless and stupid that we should all, by rights, rip up the various college degrees we've earned? In short, what is it that makes us such incomparable idiots? I'll tell you. It's the wild, whacked out stuff we believe. It's the fundamental premises, the a priori assumptions upon which all of our outlooks and thought processes are built. It's the unbelievably ridiculous presuppositions that underline the worldviews of every single one of us. Now, I don't mean by that, that we buy into silly superstitions or adore saints and credit them with miracles or wear amulets and talismans or take our horoscopes seriously. That's all small fry. When it comes to true bats in the belfry irrationalism, Belief in ghosts and goblins and Hogwarts and holy men, all that takes a back seat. What you guys believe in, what all of us believe in, whether atheists or pietists, is far, far crazier. You see, we believe in ourselves. I don't mean that the way that those health self-help gurus mean it. Believe in yourself. Envision yourself building a startup company. I mean, you guys all believe. Every single person watching this video right now believes that there is this thing called you. That you are a defined entity, a living organism. That you are sentient. That you possess consciousness. That you think and feel. That you love and hate. That you're happy or sad. And most importantly, that you are a willful creature, that you take initiative, that you make choices, that you act with intent. All of us believe this, every single one of us. Indeed, it's our ultimate bedrock belief, our most pristine and profound postulate. Without it, this video would be impossible. Without it, Nothing would mean anything, and nobody would do anything. It is the single most essential axiom of our lives, and we all take it for granted. Too bad that it's unadulterated hogwash, poppycock, balderdash. It's the most groundless, illogical, nonsensical belief anyone could possibly harbor. How so? Come, let us reason together, Socratically. From a logical, rationalist, scientific perspective, what exists in the universe? 
What is everything everywhere made of? That's right. Matter. And how about you? You exist, right? And you're part of the universe. So what are you made of? Matter. QED. Now what's the immutable, all-encompassing, quintessentially rational and logical rule that governs matter? That's right. The law of causality, according to which nothing in existence acts unless it is acted upon. Nothing moves unless it is moved, right? You take a ball and place it on the pool table. It's not going anywhere unless another ball or a pool stick, oh, I'm sorry, a billiard cue hits it. It can't start rolling of its own volition or choose which pocket to head for, right? And so it is with all matter. It obviously and by definition possesses no will, can take no initiative, can make no choices. It's just inert junk. Wait a minute, you interject indignantly. You're talking about inanimate objects. But there are, after all, Animate objects as well. Oh, yeah. Some things are organic and other things are inorganic. Some things are alive and other things are dead, right? Wrong. That's a bold-faced lie. From a rationalist scientific point of view, there is no difference whatsoever between organic things and inorganic things, between living things or dead things, they are all made up of the exact same atoms that behave in the exact same way for the exact same reasons, because some force impacted on them. In the eye of the scientist, all things in existence, alive or dead, are nothing more than machines, electrochemical stimulus response mechanisms. And you are too, my friend. You are too. You can't be otherwise in a rational universe. You do things for the exact same reason that flowers turn to the sun, magnets attract metal, stars decay, and ice cream melts. You have no will. You have no soul. Where's that? You take no initiative. You make no decisions. You have no consciousness. There is no you. The referent of that pathetic misnomer, you, is in reality just an agglomeration of atoms constantly colliding with each other and with surrounding atoms. As Thomas Hobbes summed it up, all that exists is body and all that exists occurs is motion. Or in the words of Nobel Prize winning scientist Steven Weinberg, our world and our lives can be reduced to a matter of particles and fields and the interactions thereof. And you know, you really got to hand it to them, all these latter-day logical positivists and secular scientists. Here they were, this truly awesome expression of humanist self-assertion. An unprecedented collection of strong and independent minds bent on making nature their willing servant and all events in nature subject to their calculation and control. Here they were, resolved to conquer the earth and subdue it. What therefore could be more twisted and ironic and humiliating than how they ended up. Not as victors or masters, but as victims, prisoners, and slaves of the very calculations that their will to world domination engendered. Through their immense cerebral achievements, these uber eggheads actually managed to cogitate themselves out of existence. Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. But all these guys say, I think, therefore I'm not. So there you have it, my friends. Your choice is stark, and there's no middle ground. 
either you accept the principle that the only way to understand our world and ourselves is through reason and science, and you consequently sign on to the notion that you are a thoroughly impotent marionette, and therefore also, by the way, dispense completely with the concept of morality, because without can, said Kant, there is no ought. Or you open your mind to the possibility that there are more things in heaven and earth than that which can be explained by pure science and reason. That the supernatural, the metaphysical, the mystical, and the inexplicable play a major part in the cosmos and in ourselves. And then, and only then, you get to be alive, feeling, thinking, choosing, dreaming, loving, You get to be you. So which is it, guys? Are you a mindless, soulless, indentured tinker toy? Or a conscious, willful, free human being? Here's a way to test it out. Go have a talk with yourself. Seriously. Pause the video and engage in a little reflexive chat. Direct the spotlight inward, as Mahatma Gandhi used to say and have a -a tete-a-tete with the individual who is, after all, your closest friend in the whole wide world. Whisper, hey, how you doing? Decide, I'm going to touch my nose, or I'm going to skip around the room, and then do that. Or stop just before you do it and spontaneously decide not to do it. Ponder your life, your experiences, your hopes, your dreams, your cozy, intimate meanness. Does it feel coerced, compelled, mechanical? Or do you somehow know, damn it, do you somehow sense deep down in your gut that there really is a you and that that you does what it does of its own accord, freely and independently and with a whole lot of verve? And please, don't go asking me why your personal perception of the matter is a legitimate barometer. Because there is no barometer for the truth or falsehood of any proposition other than your judgment. There's simply no alternative arbiter to appeal to on any question in the universe. And if that judgment of yours is trustworthy enough to evaluate the cogency of various logical and scientific theories, then that same judgment of yours is sound enough, I dare say, to draw conclusions about the existence and nature of its own consciousness. So go ahead. Take the old mind-body problem out for a test drive and let me know what you find out. I'll wait. Welcome back. So, do you exist? Are you sentient? Are you more than just randomly propelled set of ricocheting molecules? Your, your independence, your, your passion, your spirit, your romantic soul. Are these more than just meaningless illusions? Are you a genuinely willful, powerful, autonomous being in charge of what you do? If your answer is damn straight, and I'll bet you a beer that it is, then congratulations, you've just burst the rationalist bubble. Because the only way in hell for you to be who and what you absolutely and viscerally know yourself to be is if there is more to existence than what logic and science dictate. The only way for you to possess consciousness and intent and autonomy while a rock does not, even though from a scientific perspective, you and the rock are entirely composed of exactly the same atoms that behave exactly the same way for exactly the same reason, is if the calculations of Steven Weinberg and his bunch are missing something. 
something really basic and crucial, something that can't be calculated. Unless you argue that science is always advancing, and while it can't account for intention and volition today, it certainly will in the future, we emphasize again for the cheap seats. Science will never account for the will, for the simple, ontological, tautological reason that science is by definition a function of causality, and therefore science is perforce, and in and of itself the very diametric antithesis of will. If science doesn't reject will, then either the science in question isn't science, or the will in question isn't will. Ironically, free choice was denied for untold centuries in the name of the supernatural. God knows or controls or predestines what you do. Whereas in truth, guys, it's specifically denial of the supernatural, which is the ultimate enemy of free choice. Because in a universe that runs solely according to the law of logic, that is, the law of causality, there is absolutely, positively no escape whatsoever from the conclusion that everything you ever did, everything you now do, and everything you ever will do in your life, all of it was predetermined before you were born. Indeed, before anyone was born, from the very beginning of time. Imagine a vast, enormously complex display of falling dominoes, crisscross crossing at untold billions and trillions of junctures. No matter how immense and entangled and labyrinthine the display, the eventual movement of every domino in it from beginning to end is predestined from the instant that the first domino is pushed. Now replace that first push with the Big Bang and the dominoes with the atoms in the universe. And remember that a tiny modicum of those atoms is you and you begin to get the picture. As Hobbes put it, a person is as predictable as a pendulum clock. Which means, Thomas, that life isn't nasty, brutish, and short. It just isn't. According to the logic worshippers and the reason slaves, you, dear viewer, are a dead piece of matter. You have no control over your own destiny. You can't change your mind. You can't change anything. You are a robot with an immutable program and an expiration date. Now, if you know in your heart that you are not a pre-programmed robot, if your self-knowledge and the evidence of your extremely rich experience testify that, au contraire, you are a willful, free, living, loving individual, and we both know you are, then not you, my friend, but rather the hidebound, imaginationless, number-crunching, rigid rationalist is the real fool. And as a hero of my childhood was wont to put it, <laughs> I'm pretty the fool! I really do. His life is pretty bleak, to say the least. A slightly bigger hero of mine, King David, used to pray, et Adonai. Let my soul bless the Lord. He got it right. The soul, our individual unmoved mover, owes everything to God, the original unmoved mover. The soul is indebted to God for its very existence, not because God created the soul. I can't prove that to you. I can't even prove it to myself. But first and foremost, because only if God is possible is the soul possible. Science is great. It improves our lives in countless ways. Without it, we would still be brushing our teeth with flint rock. 
But unless we resist with all our might the creeping dictatorship of, of sterile rationalism, unless we remand science to its proper place as an answer to the question how, while jealously guarding the privilege of our defiantly unscientific souls to answer the more important question, why? Unless we preserve and cultivate dimensions of our lives that go deeper and beyond logical and cal calculation, then not only will we bereave ourselves of the indispensable notions of right and wrong, but we will inevitably usher humankind down the short road to oblivion. You got that, fool? To stay up to date with JTV content, click subscribe here if you're on YouTube and hit the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, hit the like button and under following, click see first. If you enjoy watching JTV content and want to help us continue to grow, please consider making a donation to us by clicking here.